If you want to see my first impressions of the Cleona Cosmetics singles and highlighters, then stick around. Hi there, it's Elaine with another video and I'm super excited about this video. I have been waiting to do this video. I'm so excited. I am going to be playing with the Cleona Cosmetics single shadows and some highlighters. Now, some of the highlighters I have been using, I started using them when I did a focus on the Linda Halvari collection, the Enchanted Secrets and the Metallic Mysteries 2 as well as the Infinity palette. I will put uh, the video right here. So I did play with some of the Cleona highlighters and I also have uh, done swatches of the two sets actually of swatches of the Cleona Cosmetics singles and highlighters that I have. Uh, I will put them in succession here as the cards allow me to do that so that you can go and reference them if you want. I'm really impressed with this brand and I have just been just itching to do a brand new focus on this one. It's just been some time coming. It was in the queue and you know what? In a way, having to wait, the anticipation has been really great. But every time I've played with them from unboxing to swatching, it has just made it so hard not to use them without you. <laughs> so I have been very good. I have only swatched now and then, but I've not put them on my eye other than highlighters. And when I did, I did tend to tell you what was on usually my inner lid. I just blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's just, let's stop. What I have done so far today, I've done all of my, um, beauty stuff, skincare, I have done a base. So hopefully you can see I have my powders, I have my bronzer. I did do a Tarte Insight blush, but I did not do any highlighter, though I did do a primer uh, and setting spray. I did the Hangover RX by Too Faced. So I might have a little bit of shine going on, but I have not used any of the uh, Cleona Cosmetics products. And by the way, I have called them Cleonad in prior videos, I was wrong. It is Cleona Cosmetics. So that's what I'll be saying from now on. Enough talking, let's get into these. So I've got a whole whack of mattes and shimmers and duochromes in here. The, the top part is mostly the Harvest Moon and down here um, there are a number of singles from their 66.5 North I think it's called their collection. And then uh, down here, some more of their specialty highlighters. And then I have a couple of these. There's always a plastic in here. I don't know why I'm keeping it. Two, two quads of their highlighters. I won't bother opening this one because it's really hard to see the color on camera. But I did use the high voltage. I did use this one in the intro to the brand new focus. So if uh, you want to see that look, take a look at the intro to the brand new focus or any of the ones where I'm wearing that kind of tattooy green shirt. That's what I'm wearing um, on the inner lid in the vicinity of that video. I don't want to use any of the Aftershock highlighters because I've played with them a fair amount and I want to do a first impression on the eyeshadow. Now the last one that I was using was High Voltage, which was a lime green kind of reflective highlighter. So I'm going to stay away from lime green, despite the fact that I love, <laughs> love lime green. Gosh, they're beautiful. Okay, I think, just gonna, are these going to work? Okay, I'm going to use Rune, Carrot, aren't those gorgeous? And this one, my finger's really dry. Hang on. Get a better swatch here. And this one, Rune, Carrot, and... I would not have thought of that name. Chamomile. So let me swatch these three on my hand. Along with a mat that I think I'll use. Holy cow! 
cow, these are gorgeous. Gosh, I hope this translates to the eye like I'm hoping. Oh, I'm changing my mind. I want to use all of it. They're so pretty. I think I only need one matte because I have a, a beige base already from the Smashbox matte exposure. If you're, if you don't know that palette, here it is. This is the shadow that, oh, this is the shadow that I have all over to set my eye primer. And my eye primer is the Urban Decay Primer Potion, which I'm very, look, very much looking forward to using up because I think it dries out my uh, eyelids. I have very dry skin and I think it's, I think it's meant for oily lids. I will find out by switching in a couple days. Um, so yeah, it's just a it's just a cream base, and so I think I only need. I think I'm going to do two mattes. So I'm going to do a beige and a brown. Yeah, so I only need one. Okay, all right. So we have for your viewing pleasure. We are going to go with chamomile up here. We are going to go with rune here. Carrot, and this one, which I think is parchment. Ha! My memory is not bad. Now we're going to go with parchment. I was going to use this one as well, but in looking at it, I don't think that's necessary. So uh, there are a couple of swatches here on my uh, hand that I'm not going to be using, but uh, just to recap, these four up here. So carrot, rune, uh, this one is, I'll get back to it, parchment and chamomile. Okay, so those are the four. This is gonna be fun! And I just decided not to go with too, too much color as the last uh, looks that I did were with the NYX, NYX uh, Grind palette and those are very grungy looks and I wanted to do something a little bit more, a bit more staid maybe. And I think I'm going to do worried a little bit that carrot is going to overpower rune, but if I um, layer them, it should be okay. Now let's try it. If I need to adjust something, I'll adjust. That's the whole thing about first impressions. You learn, right? You learn. And let's go right in. I am going to go right into parchment, which was that um, this nice big kind of mustardy yellow beige color. Wow, they, okay, so the mattes are powdery. If you don't like that, you may really dislike these um, these mattes, but in the defense of powdery mattes, I find they blend better. So um, that is what I think. I'm just going to grab a smaller mirror because that Tarte palette is, it's great size for 25 shadows, but I do find it's a little bit big to be holding. So a little smaller palette here. Okay, let's go. I think I'm going to do what I usually do, which is I'll do one eye and then do the other one fast forwarded. I think that's been working well. And I've heard some feedback that you do like to see both eyes um, at the same time, but I don't think that there's going to be an issue if, if one is fast forwarded because you've seen the gist of what I'm doing on one eye. Okay, and I, I really like this going up to the brow bone. If you've got a lot of lid space, just go for it. it, it it doesn't seem to take away from the look. I would think if you have um, less lid space, it might bring the eye down. But I I like the fact that it just kind of seems to do something nice on the inner lid, as long as your eyes aren't too, too close together. I, I've been really enjoying that. Okay, so this looks pretty good, I think. I'm just going to add a little bit more little bit more to the crease and I, in looking at the colors there are a couple of colors a couple of mattes that make me think of subculture in there that must have been why I like the harvest moon <laughs> it had some fall colors in there this is nice okay let me do the other eye and then we'll get into a new shade on this side Hopefully this is not causing you trouble with the zoom. I really hope it's not. 
Oh, I forgot to mention what's on my eye as well. Around uh, the upper waterline is the um, Urban Decay Perversion um, liner because I just wanted to. I don't have any mascara on or anything. I just wanted to have a little bit of <laughs> a little bit more definition around my eye because otherwise I think that the eyes just get lost in the shadows as as I'm doing the uh, first impression stuff. Okay, this looks really good. I'm going to go down on the lower lash line to extend that mustardy beige. And I think it's um I think it's a light enough color that I can go with a fluffier brush. I'm going to use my angled brush for this. This color is so different on the eye than it looks like in the pan. I find that so interesting when that happens. And I'm finding, I've been finding as I do eyeshadow on camera that I, I kind of disregard this little spot here and I end up putting my eyeshadow too high. So I'm trying to, uh, trying to go a little lower today. We'll see how it goes. Just watch me go right up to my cheekbone, right? <laughs> All right, next eye. Okay, tell me that does not look good. I'm happy with this color in a big way. It, it does have the start of the same kind of look as I did with the grind though. It is more yellow than I thought it was, so my apologies if it's so close to what I did before, at least as a base. But we're, we're about to change the colors here. So let me take a look at what we're doing next. I think I need to deepen up the crease. I didn't think I would. But I think I'm going to, let me just look at a couple shadows here. I think I'm going to go with chocolate orange in the crease. Just, just to put something in the crease. And it's a, it's a very pretty orange at low in the crease, but I, I think I want something in the crease. So let's, let's try that. And for that purpose, I'm going to go with a smaller fluffy brush for the crease. Hopefully that shadow will do well with that. Tapping off the brush a little bit. We're going in. And this one is a metallic. It's not even shimmer, it's metallic. I remember now. It's from the, oh, what's the collection? They have some, um, they have 12 or 13 metallics and this is one of them. Okay, not as deep as I thought it would be. I think I'm going to layer it with um, a deeper shade with this one right here. So this is chocolate orange and I'm just going to put this in with it. So the other matte shadow that I just picked up is Toasty. That's the one I just picked up. I'll do those two colors and then do the other eye. Houston, we have liftoff. Okay. Woohoo! I like it. That worked out really nicely. Okay, I'll do the other eye and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I think these two eyes look pretty even. I'm really happy with how this is going so far. And now we're going to go into the BAM shadows. First off, I'm going to layer a few of the shadows on top of each other on my hand to just make sure that what I'm assuming is actually going to happen. So let's test that out. I highly encourage that for anyone to test things out before they go onto your eyelid. Okay, so Chamomile is a bit of a transformer shade on mattes. So you can see here the effect that it has on these two mattes. But 
on the metallics, it does not have an effect. However, the soul shade, this is rune right here, and you'll see the soul shade is, it appears kind of a beigey, browny green in the pan, but it turns rune into kind of an, there's a little bit of an olivey green, gray tone that it turns rune. And so these are very different from what I was expecting. So I think that I am not going to go with the plan. I think I'm going to go with rune uh, on the outer lid. And we'll start with chamomile on the inner lid and just see what happens. For Rune, I'm going to use my angled brush. Again, Rune is this one right here. Okay, I've done the base of the shadow and I'm going to go in with my finger to just intensify the color. I like the effect. I liked it so much I went further in. And it's funny because Rune looks like I thought Carrot would. And it has kind of a an old gold olivey color. And I think it blends nicely into the chocolate orange and up into toasted and parchment. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to drag it with a smudger brush. I'm going to drag that color also onto the lower lash line because I think it's going to look good and not too crazy metallic. Okay, so I'm using my smudger brush. So I've got shadow on here. Hopefully you can see it now. Zoom's not... There we go. The zoom was not cooperating. Okay. Let's see where the shadow is. Okay. I'm going to do the same on the other eye and then uh, we'll get back to chatting. Okay, I just cleaned off my angled brush because I am noticing that there's some uh, shadow missing right in to the inner corner. Before I go in with chamomile, I would like to just make sure that I have enough of the parchment on. Um... No. I think I'm going to go with Gord. This one. I think that that is going to be the right color. Let's just do a quick swatchy swatch here. Yeah. I'm going to go with this color a little bit closer to the inner lid. I'm going in. I like the effect of that.
and I'm going to go in with Gord along the lower lashes as well. Okay, I'm just going to soften up a little bit the inner, inner um, lid up to the brow bone with a fluffy brush. Okay, so I just softened it up a little bit, but I really do like the effect. I, I really enjoy it. And then we're going to brighten up the inner lid now with that chamomile color. Just to remind you what the chamomile color is, this is the one. And I am resisting using so because that is the one I really want to use, but enough with the lime green. I want to give you something different. So I'm going to just wipe my fingers here because we're going to apply those colors, well, the um, chamomile with my little finger. And again, chamomile is this one right here. That is the one we are using on the inner lid. I almost dipped my finger <laughs> into soul. <laughs> Tell ya. You know you're drawn to something when I think this is really pretty. Okay, I'll do it on the other eye and then we will see what we do to finish up the final look. Okay, so we have a decent set of eyeshadows here, I think, right? I think it turned out pretty nicely for never having used any of these colors. I think they go really well together. I ended up using a lot more than I thought I would. Okay, so I used parchment. Pretty much, um, quite all over kind of that mustardy color. Uh, this one is toasty. I use that in the crease along with chocolate orange right there. Then on the outer lid, I use rune. And I was going to use carrot, but I didn't. And then on the inner lid, I used chamomile right here. I don't think I missed anything. Yeah, those are the colors that I used today but I still want to do a highlight and I think that I'm going to highlight with the, this is a sorbet highlighter. That's the, the what it's called. And it's got three colors in it. And I think I'm going to focus on the peach section and do a peach highlight to go with the kind of peachy mustardy look uh, on the high point of my cheekbones and along my nose. So I will do that right now. And then we'll get into non-Cleona, um, I guess, products. I'm going to use my fluffy highlighter brush and go very selectively into the peach that I just showed you with a mirror.
just going to use whatever's left on the brush to go down the bridge of my nose. Apparently I need a little bit more, so let's do a little bit more. And Cupid's bow. I like the highlighter effect for sure. Yeah, I think we're good. I The only thing is I would like a, um, to highlight my brow bone, but I don't think there's anything in the shadows that I have from uh, Cleona that's going to work for that. I am going to, just going to go back into my Smashbox palette and grab some of the vanilla. I'm going to go back into this shade just to make sure that the brow bone is light enough. That's better already. Okay, now we want to do some lips and lashes. And what I mean by lashes is mascara. I think we can do a lower waterline pencil. Let me just take a look at my Urban Decay pencils and I'll pick something that will suit this look. Okay, I'm going to go into Stash, this one. For the lower lash line, I think that'll go well with Perversion, which is on the upper waterline. And I don't, I don't feel like doing a wing today, so I think I'm going to keep it to what I have on the waterline, what I'm going to have on the lower lash line and waterline, and do a really good, thick, application of mascara. Okay, I am back. Let's just get up close here. So I used, just to recap here, I used the Stash pencil from Urban Decay on the lower lash line and waterline. I reapplied Perversion on the top just to make sure it was black black because I don't have any um, lash line pencil. I didn't do a wing. Then I used the Sil Booster XL with the Definicil, and those are both from Lancome. And then I used the Annabelle Skinny for the lower lashes. And I used two good coats, one good coat of the Sil Booster XL, and then two coats of the Definicil to make sure that the lashes were full. I have not done my lip because I did not talk about what I was going to do. What I had on my lips beforehand is this, you can barely see the color right here, how about that? This is a gorgeous color. It is from Joe Fresh. It is called Angelic or Angelique. Love, love, love this gloss and it feels so good. It feels like my lips can handle something drier. Um, this is not super dry, but I got a compliment about this brownish color. It is a NYX lip pencil. I'll just give you a good swatch here. It is a very brown lip liner from NYX and it's called Downtown Beauty. Okay, so here we go. I just sharpened it and we are going to go in and do the, going to do the um, periphery and then fill it right in with this. They're very buttery. Whenever I do my lip liner or lipstick, I wonder what I'm going to <laughs> what I'm going to notice when I edit what kind of funny faces I do. I guess we all have our lipstick application face, just like we have our mascara face and our uh, eyeshadow application face. Okay, I had to fix it a couple times on that side, but um, if I did leave it in the edits, you're going to see that, or if you don't, here's what I did. Because it's so creamy before it has set, 
I just used my finger and just wiped inward and it's like I had no line to begin with so that's good it does stay for as many hours as you would like it to stay once it's dried down if you don't like the feeling of a just a lip liner if you find that it's kind of tacky and and dry let me show you what I've been putting over top of these uh, NYX lip liners. I have mentioned these in a previous video and you'll see a little bit of discoloration because I've, I've been using it for this purpose. It is the Wet n Wild Clear Gloss and it does, I won't put it on my lips because I'm doing another video after this and, and it tends to pool on the sides of my mouth, but if it's just a regular day and I'm not going to be talking my head off, it does a very nice finish on top of the color. So I really like it and it's super, super comfortable when you, you wear a, a clear gloss over one of these. But I don't mind this. I have done a full day with this and it's fine. It doesn't get on your teeth. It's, I think it looks good. So that is the final look. That is my final first impressions of the Cleona eyeshadows. Like I said, I had used the highlighters before and I had done one application of the Sorbet, which is uh, the one that I used today, the focusing on the peach in the trio of kind of marbled colors. I'm happy with this look. I think it turned out really well. Please tell me what you think in the comments below. I look forward to your feedback and I look forward to other comments and suggestions because I do pay attention to them. Downtown Beauty is one example, right? I got some feedback and I think that that is helpful because it does help guide me in what I am going to help you out or do more of because it's, it's appreciated. So thank you very much for that. I hope you found this first impressions uh, useful. I very much appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, take care. Thank you.